The cave we are exploring is called Vilina, which can be translated as fairy cave. We have two good reasons to survey this cave. The first one is purely the benefit of exploration. It is rare to find the opportunity to explore new places where few or no humans have gone and which remain unknown to science. The second reason is because of our suspicion that this cave might be polluted already. You see, there is a large power plant and open air coal pit upstream on the other side of the mountain in Gachko. This plant is planning further expansions, which doesn't necessarily seem the smartest move. So our goal here is to support local activists by putting together an impact assessment on the pollution levels to understand the condition of this system. Welcome back to our cave exploration vlog where today here in Bosnia we are making ready for our first day of actual cave exploring, our first day of action. For this expedition we have gathered a team of experts from a variety of fields to get a thorough analysis of the cave. Dushan and Petra will be diving into the wellspring of the cave to survey its biodiversity and map the underwater section. Marco, Dado and Branco are the speleologists on the team and will be helping set up the gear for the divers as well as mapping and exploring the dry parts of the cave. Branco is a local legend among cave divers and speleologists. He has been exploring caves for more than 25 years and even has a species named after him. Then we have Mate and Roman, who will be surveying the dry parts of the cave and also the creek to understand the local biodiversity and whether there is potential to identify a new species. And finally, there is me and Tiago, my brother, and also one of the biologists from Mossy Earth, who decided to fund this expedition. To get to this cave, we traveled by train to Croatia and then joined the team in driving down into Bosnia. For this trip, I want to show you how things really were on the ground and how a real scientific expedition goes. So, we let the camera roll a lot and uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy this extra information. And so the river goes, one, one part of the river comes like this and one comes from like here a little this is the this original river mushnica so that's branko the one that i told you that he is ah okay branko also ah da pa ono najniže mora biti od nas je on od nas on da nema 20 metara a koliko to ima hoda recimo to ceste the distance what did you conclude from that so we found out uh, the, how to get to the big uh, sinkhole. So he says that it's uh, no problem, that it's like very easy to find it. Ah, good that he uh, was able to provide that information. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people here are really nice. I mean, they are a little bit scared still from the war, but you can understand that uh, it's a remote area. And uh, of course, you know, you need to take care of yourself. But this part looks also interesting, look, that... Uh, yeah, there's a bit of... Yeah, so also there could be, a, it's a big chance there is something there as well. It's usually this kind of cut-off karst, means there is some water that was previously coming there. So we're walking to the cave now. I'm here with uh, Dushan leading the way there. And uh, yeah, I have the, the tanks on my back here. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just a little bit of a walk. And uh, we'll start exploring soon. Set up the line, see how we are with our with our air. If our air is okay, we will start mapping. Uh, 
uh, I will do the mapping and Dushan on the way back will uh, try to film or collect as much animals as he can. Most of the exploration, explorations in Croatia I do because the caves are unexplored, but uh, always when you find time to find a really new one and start something from the start, from the scrap, it's really, really It's, it's pretty special. Yeah. to 40 meters depth and it continues the visibility is one meter okay so that's not we a lot. couldn't see left or right or anything we lost a lot of time just going with the line to one part of the rock and then to another part to figure out where does the passage go what is the direction we should go because you don't see <laughs> it was more silty than we expected so it was quite it is, but it's not, it's not silt, it's not silt, it's, I think it's some bacteria that swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We didn't, when we breathe, we didn't get any more silt or mud, maybe just a little bit, minimal. Yeah, yeah, but it's not immediately when we came, the visibility is just bad. It was just bad, was just in bad. general, yeah. In general. And it reminds me of one cave that I dived in Ogulin, Goyak, where we had these big, big suspended things in the water that reflect your light. Yeah, yeah. And you can't see anything, and in Goyak it's bacteria. Oh. I found uh, amphipods, I think Nifargus, maybe Tiflogamarus, and Troglocaris. Uh, a lot of them, a lot, a lot. No proteus, no dragons. Only, only one fish, but uh, I'm sure the next dive will be much better. <laughs> so, from our first dive, we have established that something strange is happening here. Given what we know about this cave's morphology, we expected to have a pristine underwater habitat down there, but that is not what we found. We only found cave shrimp, which poses some interesting questions. You see, cave shrimp are relatively high up in the food chain of caves. As such, we would have expected other species to also exist down there, such as cave fish and the enigmatic owl. So essentially what we found could be the remnants of a once thriving cave ecosystem, but how do we go about proving this? To help solve this mystery, we need to look at the surrounding area. The cave is connected to a small creek, which means that we could also find some clues about the ecosystem there. So Roman, Tiago and Mate set out to survey the area. They are collecting all sorts of specimens in the hopes of finding another piece of this puzzle. This is the contact between the underground habitats and the surface habitats. And on this, such a contact, we, we can find some cave, cave animals. To collect the specimens, they will catch them with a net and also use a technique called electrofishing, where they send a small electric current into a small part of the creek that very briefly stuns the fish and allows for observation. So pretty, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so you know so the it's usually when it when it feels threatens, it does this unken unken reflex when it shows uh, its belly. Yeah. But it also covers its uh, eyes. eyes. Oh, so that's, that's amazing. You don't. See, I don't see you. I don't exist. Bye, man. They also found some cave shrimp outside, which proves that the ecosystems are indeed connected. Roman later did some early stage analysis on some of the cave shrimp specimens and he thinks that one of them has the potential to be a new species. 
but only time and further analysis will prove this, so let's not get excited just yet. Then Mate also has one more card up his sleeve, eDNA. So we collected, we collected the water from the cave and uh, right now we are filtering the water. So we are taking around 3 liters of the sample and actually uh, we are searching for environmental DNA. So it's the DNA that is present in the, in the environment, in the water. But uh, we are targeting one certain uh, frag fragment of uh, DNA that is specific to, to the Olm and, uh, and this endemic fish species that we are looking for. So after we go back to Zagreb, we will extract DNA from, uh, from this filter and uh, we'll perform qPCR reaction to see whether there is amplification or not. If there is, that confirms that uh, both Olm and, uh, and the fish are present here in, in, in this cave system. That's a different way to uh, yeah, explore these places. Yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't have to actually see the species, you, you are targeting it indirectly. So yeah. it's much easier than go inside the cave and dive. In the second cave, Roman also found a large amount of biodiversity. In fact, uh, fetuses or shit in yeah. English, you know, what they produce. But this is in fact the organic matter, which is deeply needed in the cave system because here is no food. So this is basis. The dead guano is basis to grow for bacterial, for fungi, uh, for some other uh, small uh, animals. And that this is start of the pyramid, you know. After that comes some predators which eat them and so on. So this is the some ki kind of biocenosis, and we call it guano guano biocenosis. He even looked for some specimens using UV light, which makes for some really cool shots. Branko, Tado, and Marco also had a look at the sinkhole where the water from the creek goes, but the cave there runs deep, and this seems to be beyond the scope of our expedition this time as it would require a multi-day effort inside the cave just to get to the starting point of the dive. So, yeah, maybe next time. At the end of our second day, we joined Dado to map all the dry parts of the cave, because any good expedition needs to produce some good maps. He uses some complex gadgets I have never heard of. I use this measurement tool. It's uh, Leica, but it's, it has some... Uh, improvements so with one shot I will take a distance measure uh, inclination and also azimuth and on this program I can uh, then <coughs> do a drawing of a okay so this blue is measurements with this you uh, and uh, other things I do uh, freehand. Back with Dusan and Petra, the second dive delivered much the same results as the first one. A low visibility, barren ecosystem. To complete the work, Petra mapped the underwater part of the cave. This expedition has produced a lot of value and a lot of things are being generated from these three days. Dusan and his team will complete the impact assessment of the underwater ecosystem to be used by the Bosnian activists. Petra will put together maps of the underwater section and Dado maps of the dry caves. Roman and Mate surveyed the biodiversity of the creek, and Mate also collected eDNA to try and detect the ore. As these results come in, we will be adding them to our page at mossy.earth to complete the documents for this expedition. As for me, I left Tiago in Bosnia to do some rock climbing, and headed back to Croatia with the team. Now I'm sitting on the train out of Zagreb at 1am, and reflecting on the expedition. It is something unique and truly special to be involved in exploring unknown places. 
And while Mossier's focus remains on direct action rewilding projects, I do think there is a place for this in our future. In a recent team discussion, we talked about having a small percentage of our impact budget dedicated to research and exploration, as it often is the basis from which we can plan direct interventions. It is a bit like a normal company's R&D department trying to find new opportunities. I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments. Do you feel this type of ground zero projects are worth it? Is the rationale clear to you or do you have any questions on how it all works? Please let me know. Until next time, cheers!